Greetings to you viewers from across the globe. You're welcome to the show Viewpoint, where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. I'm your host, Odiawa AI for Video Media. You do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Video Media, and follow us across various social media platforms. And don't forget to download the Video app on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Once again, you're welcome to the show, and I do believe you're having a fun field Friday. We'll be talking about the fiscal uh, fixing from the incumbent state governors and or rather the state budgeting. But well, first off, we will begin with the headlines making the rounds in the political scene. Now, first stop will be River State, uh, which actually, as we know, is plagued with all sorts of crises. Now, it so happens that the River State crisis has deepened as Adango, the attorney general of the state, has actually resigned. Now, Professor Zakios Adango has resigned as the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in River State, the Garden City. Adango's resignation, dated November 14, 2023, was addressed to Governor Fubara. Adango said his resignation was based purely on personal uh, decision. Adango was River's uh, Attorney General under the administration of Yeson Wike who was governor from May 2015 to May 2023. His resignation occurred amid the ongoing political crisis rocking the state with the State House of Assembly as the boxing ring. Now, the crisis in the 32-member River State House of Assembly has begun as a result of a rift between Fubara and his predecessor, Yeso Mwike, who is now currently, as we speak, the minister of the FCT, the Federal Capital Territory, a position in the APC-controlled government. Though he is a member of the opposition party, the PDP, People's Democratic Party. Now, the assembly complex, if you will recall, earlier on Wednesday, was demolished by the governor amid tight security about two months after fire gutted the assembly complex. Now, still on River State, the gale of resignation slams Fubara's cabinet as three more commissioners pull out of a uh, the Fubara administration. Now, the political tsunami sweeping River State appears unabating as three more commissioners resign from the governor Fubara's uh, cabinet. Now, the latest to pull out from the cabinet are the commissioner for works, George Kelly Alabo, who served in the same capacity under the Yeson Wike's government, and social welfare and rehabilitation commissioner Inime Aguma, and their finance counterpart Isaac Kamalu. Their resignations coming as after the state attorney general and commissioner for justice, Professor Zakios Adango, which I mentioned earlier, quit his office, were contained in separate letters to Governor Fubara. Now, the finance commissioner, however, in any case, did not state why he pulled out of the cabinet. Now, moving on to other matters on the political scene, apart away from River State now, we're talking about the Supreme Court, which is actually to deliver judgments on Nnamdi Kanu. Now, the Supreme Court will today, the 15th of December, deliver judgment on the appeal seeking to compel the federal government of Nigeria to release the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Namdi Kanu, from detention. Now, a five-member panel led by Justice Kudirat Kuku, uh, rather, I beg your pardon, a five-member panel led by Justice Kudirat Kekireku had in October fixed the date after counsel for both the federal government and the detained IPOB leader adopted their final briefs of government of uh, argument rather i beg your pardon now on october 13 2022 the, the court of appeal abuja delivered a judgment ordering kanu's release from detention now the court ruled that he was abducted ill-treated and illegally moved from kenya to nigeria to face treason and terrorism charges the judges dismissed the criminal case, but the Nigerian prosecutors have appealed and Kanu, who is in his mid-50s, remains yet still in custody. Kanu, a former London estate agent who also runs the outlawed Radio Biafra station, was first arrested in 2015 but jumped bail two years later, reappearing in the UK and in Israel. Now, on to other news making the rounds, we have the ex-Vice President Namadi Sambo, Emir of Zazu. They actually went to visit Governor Sani, backing an independence probe. Now, this is in connection with the recent uh, Kaduna bombing. Former Vice President Namadi Sambo has commended the federal government for its determination to probe the military airstrike 
at Tudumbiri village in the Igabi local government area of Kaduna state, which claimed over 85 lives and left several injured. He made this uh, commendation when he paid a condolence visit to Governor Ubasani of Kaduna state, who is currently the incumbent governor at Sir Kashim Ibrahim government house over the tragedy on Thursday. Now, Namadi Sambo, who was also a former governor of the state, said a proper investigation into the incident in Kaduna State bombing will not only identify the cause of the accidental bombing, but will also ensure that such mistakes do not occur in the future. Now, while commiserating with the victims and members of the community, Tundumbiri, Sambo commended Governor Sani and the President, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, for their prompt response and support they have given to the victims so far as well as ensuring that all the victims are well compensated now away from a uh, crisis now and uh, crisis plaguing the nation and some lightning news now we are transforming nigeria with support of the national assembly this is according to his excellency bola med tinubu now speaking at a colloquium to mark the 61st birthday of the senate president godswill akpabio in Abuja, President Tinubu said the challenges facing the country will be jointly assessed by the executive and legislature with a view to evolving implementable solutions for the good of Nigerians at large. President Bola Tinubu on Thursday said the efforts of his administration to, tra to transform Nigeria's economy are yielding results with the support of the National Assembly led by Senate President Godswill Akpabio and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, now extolling the leadership cre uh, credentials of the Senate President. The President said the Chairman of the National Assembly has always shown commitment to national development, starting out as a commissioner in Akwaibom State, where he understudied Lagos State, drew up a blueprint and implemented it as a two-term executive governor. Now, recalling how some of the state's programs initiated by Senator Fabio while he was governor developed the state, noting that the drainage, the drainage system, rather, Senator Fabio constructed had saved many lives and livelihoods, which is evidently true even up till now as we speak. Now, in his remarks, the Senate president commended the president in return for his visionary leadership, most recently demonstrated in the quality of decisions taken so far to ensure improved security and a revamped economy. I'm Odiawa AI for Visual Media and the show is Viewpoint, where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. Join me in the next phase of the show. You're welcome back to the show. The show is Viewpoint, where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. I'm your host, Odiawa AI for Visual Media. I do believe you're having a fun field of Friday. You will do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us across various social media platforms, and don't forget to download the Vigil app on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Now, moving on to the subject matter, we will be talking about the fiscal fixing, or should I call it state budgeting. Now, with uh, the 2023 set to expire shortly, State governments have been rolling out their budgets for the fiscal year 2024. Currently, as we speak, six states have presented their financial plan or expenditure proposals to their respective state house of assembly. Now, in my own view and my own opinion, the governors should set in motion the annual state's budgets, beginning with the 2024 stream to address, most importantly, the reversal of this uh, mass poverty, joblessness and misery within the nation amongst the citizens. Now, Babajide Somolu, the governor of Lagos State, Nigeria, in the Nigeria's economic powerhouse, actually proposed a budget of uh, 2.24 trillion Naira. Now, while in the crisis, uh, Torn Garden City, River State, Governor Fubara has crafted one of uh, 800 billion for the coming fiscal year. Now, River States now, which is plagued with uh, all sorts of crisis, amidst the whole uh, fr uh, squabble, still has passed its own uh, budget for the year. The governor of Oyo State, Shei Makinde, has also set the pace for the budget, presenting the package of 434.2 billion uh, Naira. 
Now, Enugu State's counterpart in his uh, first full year budget, Peter Mba, proposed to spend 521.5 billion in 2024. Now, the heartbeat of Nigeria, Governor of Edo State, actually, Governor Godwin Obaseki, has also proposed 325.3 billion uh, naira. Gateway State's Governor, Dakwa Abiodun of Ogun State, has announced a proposal also of 703 billion naira with an ambitious capital component of 4.415 billion naira, allocating 209.1 billion naira or 31% for infrastructure. Education receives 16%. Education receiving 16% of the budget not only sounds sarcastic, but it's quite uh, enlightening. Let me put it that way. Now, for Play Two States, Governor Caleb Motfuang proposed uh, 295 billion naira for the 2024 budget. And the outlay by Bielsa's governor, Governor Duye Diri, is 480.9 billion naira. For 41.72 billion naira higher than its uh, 2023 budget. Now, based on the outlined observation, Lagos State appears to be the heavy spender here, if I may put it that way, followed by River State in second place and Ogun State in third place. Now, interestingly, despite the huge figures, Nigerians are not excited because the lofty titles assigned to the budget or the resonant promises enunciated over the years budgeted by Nigerian government, whether at the state or federal level, has not conveyed any form or sort of uh, prosperity gains and positive human development indices. Instead, it, the, the opposite is the case. Extreme poverty on the development, shabby infrastructure, economic woes, and hopelessness for the majority are pervasive. While a large number of citizens languish in uh, deprivation, in any case, public funds provide untrammeled luxury for the bourgeoisie. Most of the successive state governors have been accused of looting or embezzling the states. Quite sad. The world poverty clock, as we speak, ranks Nigeria as having the second largest number of persons living in poverty worldwide behind India. As we speak, or rather, just last year in 2022, the National Bureau of Statistics aggregated 133 million Nigerians as multidimensionally poor. The report listed Sokoto, Bayelsa, Gombe, Jigawa, and Plateau states as the top five poorest states in the country. Now, in a pre-budget uh, briefing, Somolu lamented that Lagos required a seven trillion naira for required seven trillion naira for infrastructure and basic amenities in the 2024 fiscal year of Nigeria's road stock of uh, 200,000 kilometers. Only six hundred uh, sixty thousand kilometers has actually been paved. Rural roads in Lagos states are actually in a mess, according to him, which is also evident about constricting the movement of uh, products, goods, and even the people, commuters themselves. Rural communities are threatened by insecurity as Islamic uh, insurgencies, terrorists or bandits, robbers, kidnappers, and cults or criminal gangs are actually holding sway. Now, justifiably, the arguments of the Lagos state governor are on track. As the saying goes in local parlance, soup with sweets, namonikila. By that I mean, if desired quality is to be achieved, substantial funds must be put to reasonable use. But frankly speaking, there is little to show for all the spending as germane amenities are actually sparse. Fortunately, if I may speak optimistically, there is hope, undoubtedly. All the states have huge but untapped uh, potential, be it human, material, or mineral resources. Many are rich in solid minerals and uh, fertile, land for, fertile land for agriculture. Now, instead of making use of these resources, they are glued to the twisted sharing culture that impoverished the people and stifles uh, initiative. One can't even think straight. Now, might I suggest, food for thoughts, like I always say, we need to wine and dine about this in our brains. 
to escape this uh, dependency and convey prosperity gains to the people, the governors who are heading the states should fight for true federalism. And by that, I mean resource control and fiscal federalism as seen in other federations in the Western world. They should formulate uh, pragmatic economic plans and run their states as autonomous productive units. Now, American states each develop their own uh, pace. Now, with a 2021 GDP, now with a 2021 GDP of 3.35 trillion dollars, California would have been the world's fifth largest economy if it were actually a country. You can imagine. Now, I think we should take a cue from that. That is just a state out of the 51 states in the Federation of the United States of America. Now, on a final note, before I draw the curtain on today's uh, episode or the show for today, Viewpoints, the 36 states of the Federation should aspire to federalist ideals based on their competi uh, comparative advantage. They ought to initiate economic programs that will catalyze productive activities not just productive activities, jobs also, deploying the annual budget at its uh, critical tools. I'm Odiawa AI for Video Media, and the show has been Viewpoints, where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. You will do well to follow us across various social media platforms, and don't forget to download the Video app on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. And do well to also subscribe to this channel, Video Media. Thanks for watching.